Adams last year? Yeah, it was obviously difficult. I talked to him the last night after the game. Uh, just thinking here, I, as a Canadian citizen, I gave you guys my best impression. I, Chuck Sumer, I think it is, or whatever, <laughs> with, with the emotional part of it, but it, it's really hard. I, it, Ken, Ken's probably my best friend, and I don't Why not? Why left night was the right time? You know, Ken and I talked uh, a lot during the Christmas break, and we, I, I just felt that, you know, you, you want to you want to extend every last breath in making it work. And we just kind of played well. Uh, at the end of the day, We were winning games, and we looked like a really good team. But part part of what we've done now is is <laughs> it, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to make a lot of sense right now, but we we don't lose with pride. Like, so it just it just felt like we we were uh, hit and miss night in night out and. I think the, we, we need to demand more of ourselves, and our record is, is not indicative of, of what we thought. I, I thought it was going to be a rebuilding year, a, a retrenching year. I was excited about what we were going to go through. I was excited about uh, going through with different a, a different mindset to, to what we've been in the past. Uh, we made a lot of hard decisions last summer, and uh, the decisions were made with with not the just this season in mind, but the, the future of the franchise in mind. And uh, but I was excited about that. I was excited about moving forward with a group of players, and I don't think that we've given uh, our, our our best effort and. Ultimately, Ken, Ken is the, he's paying the price for all our failures, starting with mine. I'm the manager. I'm the quote-unquote president of hockey operations. It, it's my team. What, what could you have done better? Um, the, the Allen, the, you, you talk about pride, and, and you didn't re-sign two guys that, that led, you know, that, that effort, veterans that, that took a lot of pride in Bacchus. Yeah. Uh, well, no, that, that, that's a great question. and. and and what I what I tried to do over the summer was was look at this franchise in 2020, 2021, 2022, knowing that the players that we have to sign moving forward. And, and I I made a decision uh, that I thought was best for this team long term. And and <laughs> that, that that that's the business I'm in. I I, I can't look at what would have been easiest for me, but well, you know, I mean, uh, what was best for the franchise? Sorry. When you, uh, when you talk about not losing pride, how much of that is individual personalities of players, and how much of that goes back to the uh, Well, I, I think that it, it, it's all encompassing. Uh, I think it starts with, with the manager, me, as the manager. It filters down. I, I think we, we've we, we've let we, we, we've let our group become independent contractors. You know, one of the things I've learned about being around St. Louis is uh, the Cardinals. <laughs> they don't have independent contractors. When they do, they get rid of them. We we have a situation now where we. we I, I trust these guys and believe in them, but I have a sense of independent contractors. And what, when you see independent contracting going on on the ice, whether you're a fan or not, it, it's easy. It's easy to see. And what we have to do is we have to become a team again. We have to take pride and we have to take pride in doing things for each other, for the betterment of of, of the team. 
see when we win how guys react when they don't get what they want. I see when we lose how guys react when they get what they want. It's a losing brand of hockey. And, and Ken's paying the price for it. Like, you know, what, 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 I, <laughs> what I truly believe, when I, when I, when I came here and, and, I, and, and Ken came as the coach, what I said to the players is, I know he knows. <laughs> like, and what I'm going to say to him today is, I know he knows. He's not here anymore. But there's one guy in that room, or one, one former guy in that room, that I think is going to the Hall of Fame, and it's Ken Hitchcock. Now, maybe some of those other guys will get there. They're gonna. They got a long way to go to, to, to reach the standard he set. I mean, ever since you announced this arrangement, the coaching waiting, there's been speculation yeah. that we'd be here with this day. How much do you think this arrangement and the changeover in the coaching staff, the loss of a couple of assistants, has led to this year's inconsistency? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess you are what you are, so probably, Jared, it, it, it has some merit to it. I believed in Ken. I believed when I talked to Ken last summer, what what his vision was, what he wanted to do this year, what he wanted to do with the team. Uh, I believe in Mike, obviously. Uh, so, was it ideal? This isn't the vision. <laughs> when, when I called Mike and I brought him in, this isn't how I thought it was going to end up. I thought we were going to have a good season. I thought Mike was going to have the ability to to learn from a Hall of Fame coach. I thought we were going to be a, a team that was competitive, that was going to fight, that was going to take pride in moving forward. And uh, so if, if whatever mess is here, it's on me. So but why do you think it got off track? I mean, you mentioned there was going to be some transition this year anyway, but the team had so much sacrifice and togetherness last year to get as far as you did. Why do you, I mean, 90% of the team is still together. Why do you think it got off track? Yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was the end of it. Uh, you know, I think we all have to take responsibility. There, there's things that I, I, I believe that probably are, I, I don't need to share with everyone. Uh, The responsibility is my, my responsibility why we're off track and it's my responsibility to get it back on track. Uh, I, I think that the independent contracting part of it has to go away. There has to be a sacrifice for the team. And, uh, you know, one of the things I think that was Ken's greatest strength was his loyalty to the players. He might have been a hard coach. He might have been demanding, he might have been all those things, but that's what made him a great coach. And I, I think that he'll, he'll be, from, from my experience working with Ken, the players realized what a great coach he was, unfortunately, after the fact, <laughs> not, not as they're going through it. And, but, you know, as I said, it's, it's a rebirth for Mike today, like, it, it's a, it's a, it's a hard day for me, but it's a great day for Mike. And talk to the players today, and we got to we got to beat Toronto tomorrow. Like we're we're I, I honestly I don't even know if we're in the playoffs today. I didn't look at the standings. We're we're fumbling around in that uncomfortable spot. This franchise should make the playoffs. The fans deserve us to make the playoffs, and not only make the playoffs, have success. And that's the job starting. Like when, when, you, when, you told, when you told Hit, was, did he say, I, okay, I know why you're here? Or did he kind of sense it was possible? You know what? That, that's why he's a, a great coach. He was defined to the end. And <laughs> I went home last night and had a strong drink. I thought about that, and that's what I love about the guy. He's, he's a hell of a coach. And... There, there was no kumbaya last night. Like he was angry. He, he, 
and, and he should have been angry. He's upset. He's upset at where we're at as a, as a franchise, where the decision that I made, and if he wasn't, I would have been more shocked than probably I, I, I was when I, you know. He, did he try to fight for his job last night after he told him? Frank, at, at the end of the day, it wasn't a, it wasn't a two-way conversation at that point. I, I told him I thought that he did a hell of a job here. Uh, when, when he got here to where the franchise is now, it's light years ahead. Uh, we're leaving, we're leaving, he's leaving this group in, in a, in a way better spot than he found it. Uh, our, our ultimate goal is to win the Stanley Cup. That, that, that's why we're here. That's why I work. That's why everyone in that room should work is to win the Cup. It's not about money. It's not about other things. If, you, if you're not in it to win the Cup, and that, that was Ken's goal. But when I look back, he had a hell of a run here. Like, he had a hell of a run here. He was, uh, whether our record is first, second, third in his tenure here in the league, at worst, he's in the top 10% <laughs> over the last five or six years. So I, I, I feel bad for the fan base that we haven't, we didn't win a cup with Ken. I'm excited about winning a cup with Mike. That's my goal is to win a cup with Mike. Uh, but I, I think as, 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 as the days go by and the months go by, we're going to look back on Ken Hitchcock tenure with St. Louis with a really admiration and a fond memory. I don't think you've had a chance to sit down and talk with players yet, but you kind of touched on what's your message going to be to them when you have that opportunity? Spotlight's on you. How concerned are you about their ability to react to demands for excellence? When you talk about independent contractors, obviously the, they react, the way they reacted to a demanding coach. How concerned are you about the group responding to